Hello, oh, this is Brother Kumar from the Maths Department of BYU-Idaho. And uh, this uh, video lesson is dealing with inference for one mean sigma unknown. And here's the outline for these, uh, for these videos. First of all, I'll be describing the p-distribution. And then I'll talk about hypothesis testing, followed up by confidence intervals. And then I'll wrap it up with checking requirements. So first of all, let's talk about the t-distribution. So here is a, a diagram where the red line represents the t-distribution, and the blue line represents the z-distribution. This is a t-distribution where you say it's, it's one degree of freedom. Now notice here there's a few things that are going on here. First of all, for the t-distribution, the tails are thicker. And the reason for that is because since we're dealing with the t-distribution, we do not know the population standard deviation. We have more uncertainty, so we have more that can be in the tails. Okay. Also, the data, there's fewer data at the center of the T distribution than there is for the Z distribution. But notice what happens when we increase our degrees of freedom, or hence increase our sample size. The degrees of freedom is equal to our sample size minus 1. So what will happen is, is that we go from 2 degrees of freedom to 3 to 5 to 10. Notice what happens to our T distribution. It gets closer and closer to our Z distribution. And so that's one nice thing about having a, a sample size, a higher sample size, is that as we increase our sample size and start degrees of freedom, our, our distribution, our t-distribution approaches a z-distribution. Okay? So the next thing I'd like to talk about is hypothesis test or hypothesis testing. So going back to uh, what we covered with one mean sigma known, or we knew the, well, we knew the standard deviation, these are the five steps for doing a hypothesis test. We stated the known alternative hypotheses, and, we, and while we did that, we determined the levels of significance. We mostly give that to you in your assignments. Okay? Then step number two is we compute the test statistic. And here's a formula. We use a, we use a z-score to compute our test statistic. It's the sample mean minus the null hypothesis divided by the standard deviation over the square root of our sample size. And step number three is we, deter we determine the p-value based on the test statistic. We use the applet that we've given you. And then, step number four is that we reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than the level of significance, and then if not, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. And then we state our conclusions based off of that. We state our conclusions based off of the last step. Um, step number four, where if we reject the null hypothesis, we have sufficient evidence to say that, and then we state the alternative in plain English. But if we don't reject the null hypothesis, instead of saying like up here where we have sufficient evidence, we say here that we have insufficient evidence to say that, and then we state the alternative in plain English. However, how realistic is our sigma? How realistic is our sigma or our population standard deviation in the being known? Well, the truth is, is that it's not very realistic, and so therefore we have to do something different. We have to do something which is uh, called use the uh, the t distribution. And so we're going to do a hypothesis test using the t-distribution. Now instead of five steps that you see here with the one sample standard deviation known, now we have six steps. Now the only extra step that we have here is that we have to include uh, what's called the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. But that's not such a big deal because these steps, steps 2 through 4, you're going to be using a, a software, whether it's Excel or SPSS, to calculate these steps these steps from steps two to four. But the steps of, uh, above step two and below step four, are the, you've seen those before anyway. So step number one is state the known alternative hypotheses, and we determine the level of significance. And we'll give that to you in class or in the assignments. And then after you get your p-value, you decide, do we reject the null or not? And we reject the null if the p-value is less than alpha, or the level of significance, and then if not, we don't reject. And then we state our conclusions. And then we state our conclusions just like we do in the last slide here. We do the same thing again. If we reject the null, we have sufficient evidence to say that, and then we state the alternative, or, or HA in plain English. If we don't reject the null hypothesis, we have insufficient evidence to say that, and then we state the alternative in plain English. Okay? So now let's go through an example. This was found in the online textbook of the wiki. We want to conduct a hypothesis test to determine if the mean body temperatures differ than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So there was some data gathered. There was uh, 148 subjects that were gathered. 
So we want to see if it's the, the temperature is different than, than what we used to think is what we what we're used to thinking is the average temperature, which is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So the null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to 98.6 degrees. The alternative is that it is not. We just want to see if it's different, so we're going to be doing a two-sided test. So we say that the mean, the population mean, is not equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So steps two and four, we're going to calculate using software, whether it's SPSS or Excel, we'll calculate the test statistic, get the degrees of freedom, and get the p-value. So what we'll do now is that I'm going to go to some SPSS output. So let me just go up here a little bit. And here's the SPSS output. Now, this is a similar output that you will see in Excel. But uh, what I want to direct you to on this, ta this table is this table here on the left side. This under T is our test statistic. This is negative 0 0.6029. Our degrees of freedom is 147. That means our sample size it was 148. Now here, uh, both, well, at least with SPSS, it only rounds three decimal places to the right. But a p-value can never be exactly zero. So even though it says triple zero here, it's our p-value, we could say at least it's close to zero. So that's what we say here. The p-value is close to zero. So therefore, since our p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. In this example, close to zero is less than 0.05, so we reject the null. So going back to the pattern here, like I showed you in the last slide here, since we reject the null, we have sufficient evidence to say that, and then we say the alternative in plain English. What we do in this example, we say we have sufficient evidence to say that the mean body temperature is different than 98.6 degrees. We refer to the alternative hypothesis like you see up here. Now let me go through a second example. This is also in the, uh, in the textbook. Uh, here is the birth weight of a, of a child is an important indicator of neonatal health. It's important that pediatric health care providers track changes in the birth weight over time. The birth weight of children in Australia has historically had a population mean of 373 grams, or 3,373 grams. 373 grams would be pretty darn small. Is this still uh, the mean birth weight of Australian children, or has there been a decrease? We will use a level of significance. So what you can do is if you go to the to the uh, online textbook for this lesson, you can you can find a link to the data and you can go through that. So you can go, so if you'd like to stop the video and go through through the six different steps, and then go back to the video and check your work. Okay, so for the answer to this, the null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to 3,373 grams. The alternative is that the mean, or the population mean, is not equal, or is less than, I should say, less than 3,373 grams. So steps number two, three, and four, you can either use Excel or SPSS. So the test statistic you should have gotten was negative 1.219. Degrees of freedom was 43, and then our p-value was 0.114. Now, where I got that here, if I go to my output, I got my output from SPSS. Here's my test statistic, my degrees of freedom, and my p Now, this is not the p-value here. Now, in, uh, in Excel, it calculates it automatically, but in SPSS, if you're doing a one-sided test, you have to take this number and divide it in half if you're doing a one-sided test. If you're doing a two-sided test, you leave it alone. But if you're doing a one-sided test, you have to take this number divided by two. SPSS, if you're using SPSS, you, it assumes that you're doing a two-sided test. So your p-value is 0.114. And so since the p-value is greater than alpha, we don't reject the null. In this example, the p-value is 0.114. It's greater than our level significance, so we don't reject. So therefore, we have insufficient evidence to say that the mean birth weight of Australian children has decreased from 3,373 grams. So I'll stop the, stop the recording here, and I'll continue with confidence intervals and wrap up with checking requirements in the next in part two of these videos.